so okay for uh peter lock here is going to be speaking about the uh, new features uh in um, mariah db uh and this is the second talk he's done this weekend so um yeah bring it on for, for peter thank you thank you it's um it's the last day of the conference so starting to um slow down a bit has anybody seen anything good this week what's the best thing you found david I, th I think the conference started off really well. I loved uh, when Ben was talking about play it again, Sam. Did you see that? And he typed immaculately and at very high speed. I wish I could do that. I thought that was a great trick. Um, I was also pretty impressed by what Julian said about security. I thought that was pretty nice. So they're the two main things I'm going to take home this weekend, this week. Now, uh, I'm going to try to talk about MariaDB. Does anybody say MariaDB? Who says Mariah? Who says Maria? Maria. All right, that sounds like from the horse's mouth, MariaDB. Um, so MariaDB has released 10.1 to availability just on the 17th of October, so we thought we'd have a bit of a look at some of the new features that are in it. Uh, and to start with, we're going to talk about data security. So encryption of data at rest. Um, the idea is that any time the data is on the disk, it's encrypted. So MariaDB, if you're using uh, InnoDB engine, will keep the data uh, on the disk in the, in the table space. So obviously that's one place you want to encrypt it. But let's be careful. We also have to encrypt it in the InnoDB log files where it gets written first because there's not much point encrypting in one spot and not the other. And things get written in the binary log file as well, so they better be encrypted there, and in the temporary files. So there's four places to encrypt it. Um, if you're going to do like a MySQL dump, uh, that'll come out in clear text, so then you need to just uh, pipe that into an encryptor as you do it. So the reasons for having encrypted data on the disk means um, if any process other than um, MariaDB can get access to that disk, then it can't read the data. So, for example, uh, when somebody comes along with their bash shell and copies off that disk, or when the data center's sysops guy comes in and gets, gets the data, he won't be able to achieve it. Or when somebody walks out with a briefcase full of Raspberry Pis, um, all the data on those little uh, micro SD cards will be all encrypted. Um, I think we can have a bit of a look. There's oh, a couple of things there that uh, don't quite work with encryption yet. The extra backup utility, one of my favorite things, um, it doesn't work with the encryption. And MySQL bin log doesn't work. I think, that's, I think that's probably a bit more serious, MySQL bin log not working, because the whole point of having a binary log is that you want to replay those transactions, so you need to get them out of the binary log, and if you can never get them out, then there wasn't much point having it. So a little bug there that we need to work on. I think it's already listed as a, um, how do I do this? Who's an Emacs user? Emacs users. Emacs. I normally use Emacs with the screen in front of me, not behind. Uh, for my demonstration, I've got a server running in Sydney, which we're accessing via the um, house Wi-Fi. This is the tail end of the my.conf file, and I've put in some configuration parameters here to do the encryption. Um, encryption is built into MariaDB, but the key management is done by a plugin. In this case, we just got the simple plugin which keeps the keys in a file. Um, if anybody's keen on security, you'll probably decide not to keep that file on the same disk as the data that you're trying to encrypt. I didn't get quite that fancy today. Um, 
And you may even decide to encrypt the keys, and uh, I haven't done that either. So this is your option here for encrypting the keys, which I've got commented out. This is where we're putting the key file. Um, one of the things we can do is rotate the keys. So after the data's been encrypted for a while, we can rotate to a new key, and that's all handled automatically um, with this, this bit here, although I've also got that turned off because we're not really going to do many key rotations in just a five minute look at it. Uh, I've told the InnoDB engine here to encrypt the tables and the logs, and uh, I'm also encrypting the binary log files and the temporary files in here. Have a look at the keys. So there are some keys in clear text. It's pretty simple and straightforward. The first number on each line is the key ID. So I've got key ID 1 and I've got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, you can have keys at 128 to 192 or 256 bits and they're hex encoded. Uh, haven't been too careful about creating random keys there. I think you might be able to even recognize a pattern if, you, if you're keen. Um, key number one is a special one. It's used for the NOB, NODB log file and key number four I set as a default in the configuration file. Now, as I say, you can encrypt the keys. If I'd done that, it wouldn't have looked very good, so there's not much point doing that for now. So let's make a table with encryption and see how we go. I don't type as well as Ben, so I've got it down here that I can copy from. That's better. Okay. So the create table is the same as we used to, except it's got those two last little bits on the end there. Encrypted equals yes, and encryption key ID equals seven. <coughs> I've actually set up this server to encrypt by default and with the default key ID of four, but anyway, that's how we do it explicitly. You could use a different key for each table if you felt like it. Uh, then we'll insert a row into there. And And the data is available for reading just as before. So we're not going to see any difference from this point of view. Um, the difference is how it's stored on the disk. And we'll just have a little look in the bind. Um, you don't get much, you can't really read the pages of data in MySQL anyway. So have a look at the binary log file to see how that's encrypted because that's kind of fun. File number 28 is one that I prepared earlier. You can see I've inserted uh, some data in here and there it is in clear text in the binary log file. But the one that we've done just now will be in log file 30. And there you see it's all encrypted and you can't can't see what it is. All right, let's move on and have a look at the headline. One million queries per second. 
is a headline on the MariaDB website now, which is pretty, pretty interesting. Um, you're also seeing some big speed improvements, 190% speed improvement from MariaDB 10.0 to 10.1. Now that sounds good and it makes a nice chart, but uh, let's just be careful about what we're seeing here. To achieve this, we're on um, uh, 20 cores and eight hardware threads in each core, so 160 cores in that machine. And we are running 320 uh, clients all at once. This is using the Sysbench um, benchmarking program. Um, the, the thing that they've really done with MariaDB 10.1 is improve the performance at the high end where you've got many cores. So your regular little server with only a couple of cores, you're not going to see 190% improvement. Um, a, million in, a million queries sounds like fun though, doesn't it? Who'd like to do a million queries? I think, um, I think they're doing about 1,000 queries in each transaction and about 1,000 queries per second. 1,000 uh, transactions per second. Now, MariaDB has uh, its clustering arrangement, which is called Galera, a bit of a, a bolt-on, although now it's bolted on so well that it's actually compiled in and you, you, get, you get Galera with the thing um, no matter what. Just uh, turn on the configuration and it's running. Um, this is reasonably new. It's been out the last few years and uh, it's becoming more mature and just some minor modifications here to make it a bit more mature again. Uh, the information schema um, has a couple more tables to give us information about what's happening in Galera. So this table shows us the servers that are connected in our cluster. And the next one shows us the, the status of the whole setup. Oh, can you read that? Where's my chocolate supply? All right, so basically, uh, that's just saying that we're, uh, this node is synchronized. Primary cluster status means we're, we're ready to go. Um, so you can use that to, to determine whether um, Galera is up and running or not on this node. Page compression. Uh, is anybody interested in compressing the data? Um, it's probably more interesting for SSDs than for spinning disks, but in any case, there's a new compression mode now where we compress a whole page of data in NODB instead of row by row. So the page is uncompressed, 16K page uncompressed in RAM, but when it comes time to write to the disk, it gets compressed. So that's a bit of a, a disk saver, or SSD saver, whichever you're going to use. There's a bunch of optimization little things making it go a little bit faster. I think this one here is, this is the one that, uh, that showed us another million transactions, per se, million queries per second. Um, lots of things go on under the bonnet there to make it a little bit faster each time. If anyone has any questions as we go, that's keen. That, you know, bring them on. Um, this is one of my pet little things. You can, you can do a create database statement. And now you can write create database if not exists. And you can write create or replace database. This is to avoid an error in that statement as you create the database. Um, now there's lots of things you can create and drop and like tables and views and indexes and so on. And sometimes the syntax allowed you to do the if not exists, and sometimes the syntax did not allow you to do the if not exists. So it was a little bit inconsistent. Now I think it's all consistent. So we can use the replace and the if not exists and the if exists wherever you go. So that's going to be a bit better. Save a bit of confusion for me. In replication, uh, MariaDB has 
made some advances recently in parallel replication. The, the problem used to be that a slave server would have to do all of its updates in a single thread. Now you saw our chart before, to get a million queries per second, we had to use 320 threads. So you can imagine if you're only using one thread, you're not going to get that kind of throughput. So to um, improve that, MariaDB has introduced some parallel replication. And that was, you know, it's uh, a new feature and it's uh, growing in maturity again here. Now it has an op optimistic mode of parallel replication where it will try to do uh, several, several transactions at once, imagining that they're not going to conflict with each other. And if it uh, detects a conflict be just before it commits, it'll roll that one back. So it's an effort, and it's a waste of effort, and a waste of effort to roll it back. But it's optimistic, saying that you know, there's probably not going to be a conflict most of the time. So that's worth a go. So that gets it to do some faster parallel replication. There's, um, you know, there's tuning parameters you can control there to um, just control how that works, turn it on or turn it off, and tell it. Uh, there you go. I'm not quite sure what you can tell it. There's some, there's some tuning parameters about that one in here. In NODB, um, we can do 64K pages now. The old limit was 16K. That's um, probably most likely to be used if you're doing uh, some tables with some big blobs, lots of big blobs in them. You may need to have um, larger page sizes. And uh, defragmentation of NODB, NODB pages is now, um, now a goer. Uh, you can you can um, do the optimized table and that'll defragment the pages. In GIS, does anybody use GIS in databases? What do you use it for? There's been some GIS support in MariaDB for a while and it's getting some more features put on it there. I've never really used it myself, so I'm not um, not sure about what it does. I've got, I've got an example here. I thought I'd have a GIS expert here to. This one. So this is the new um, function, the ST boundary function. And I don't even really know what that is. Can anybody tell me what that means? Somehow it's trying to work out the boundaries of those, those points. Anyway, there's a few more GIS functions that are, are new. Few odds and ends. Um, just let you read through those for a second. The um, analyze statement could be handy. I'm always trying to do explain, explain queries and getting. Um, Getting output, which is a little bit tricky to read, so that one's going to give us a bit more information in there, make it uh, more sensible. Um, compound statements can be used outside of stored programs, so you can just put a compound statement straight into the straight into the interpreter. So that would be if you wanted to make a little loop or insert to insert a bunch of rows or just something like that. Uh, you can put it straight in instead of making a procedure to start with. 
there's a few new variables and the first part there is the information schema dot system variables table can tell you all about all of the variables. Show you that one. So I've just selected uh, the variable name NODB log files in group and it's given me all the information about that variable. So you don't have to Google it anymore. You can um, get it straight from the information schema table. There are 607, I think 607 variables defined in there. Yep. Uh, now, who can tell me what this one means? It looks like, it looks a bit like um, marketing speak to me. Somehow we've, we've made it uh, secure against uh, new yet unknown vulnerabilities. So it's pretty, pretty good magic, I reckon. Um, and it's uh, got some password um, password plugins as well to check that a password is um, uh, you know suitably secure before before it'll accept it. You can turn those on and off. So, uh, a few password plugins which might improve security too. Beats me why we need those. Like, can't you just make up a secure password yourself and don't need a plugin to tell you that it's not secure? I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's that's a bit of a walkthrough of, of the new features of MariaDB. Any um, any questions or discussions? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Peter, for letting us know about uh, MariaDB. You got it right this time? <laughs> Maria, that's the one. I think we've one. got a Mariah Island here, so I mean, that's probably why we're, we're all mispronouncing it down in Tasmania at least. I don't know what everyone else's excuse is. <laughs> um, so if anyone's got any questions, if not, then uh, I think they're getting ready for lunch out there so you can actually get a jump on the... Um, yeah, he's got one already. Yeah. Can't give him a cluster of little drawers. Yeah. <laughs>